in a world. Four friends, one mission. Mikey, what are you doing? I'm doing the thing for the podcast. It's not that hard, bud. Dude, just say the name. Fine. It's the Freedom Friends Podcast. And that's why patriotism is my second favorite type of tism. Is awe the first? (laughs) Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, uh, I love, I like to combine the two. (laughs) Ah, patriotism. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Patriotism? Patriotism. Oh, patriotism. 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 Fucking put that shit on a shirt. Just pa- you, you know, patriotism. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? I love this country so if, much. If, I went retarded. If patriotism was in the dictionary and there was a picture next to it, do you know what it would be? Every bro fit? No, it would be that guy that wears like the American flag shirt to an outing. You know what I mean? And thinks he's fashionable. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is this is my nice shirt. My dinner shirt. Right? <laughs> it's got That's a collar. It, it patriotism. You know. is, it, yeah. is it in the Urban Dictionary? <laughs> patriotism. Did we just create a new word? I think we did. I, I fucking Hopefully. hope. Trademark. Trademark. You heard, it here, you first, heard it here folks. first, folks. <laughs> uh, anyways, welcome to the Freedom Friends <laughs> podcast. Either that or we're going to discover a whole industry already out there. <laughs> I know. We're just like, like fuck, oh. we're late. <laughs> Speaking of patriotism. <laughs> patriotism. There's this mediocre fucking podcast on the internet. <laughs> That's true. Uh, it is Bradley. Well, sometimes Bradley. Brought to you by uh, Warfighter Tobacco Company. Oh, we don't have to do that anymore. Oh, yeah. Hit the we button. Do the thing. Guys, it wouldn't be the Freedom Friends if we didn't talk about our number one sponsor, Warfighter Tobacco. Obviously, you guys have seen us all smoke them. We're here to talk about a quality product that everybody can enjoy. The great equalizer, as we've called it, the Warfighter Tobacco Stick. And it's not just cigars. They've got humidors, travel humidors, cutters, lighters, everything you need to get started on that journey. So check out warfightertobacco.com and use that code FTFO. Score yourself that sweet, sweet 15%. If you want to know my personal favorite, I'm a 762 field guy. I like that Sumatra, real nice and even keeled cigar. Great for us beginner smokers, right? And I'm told that these taste even better when you're listening to the Freedom Friends podcast. Now, back to the show. This episode is brought to you by Grill Your Ass Off. It's no secret. We're all middle-aged dudes who love barbecue. Grill Your Ass Off is our name, main go-to for our spices. That's what we use, man. Whether you're doing burgers on the grill, steaks, or my personal favorite, a little bit of pork belly burn ends, right? They've got you covered on all of that. They also have salsas. They also have seasonings and spices. They got beer salts. They've got everything, man. Check them out. Grillyourassoff.com slash Freedom Friends Podcast or use the code Freedom Friends Podcast at checkout. <laughs> All right, now that that's over, <laughs> uh, uh, I forgot we don't have to do that anymore. No, but I do have to add one: a wellness, a wellness at US. Are we back? There we up. Oh fuck! I left the goddamn products in my desk. Fucking hey, Good. producer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say we had some new samples, and I'm, I have a fuck? couple I didn't get ailments samples. that I'd like to. I got these for right now, just for displays for the show, and I got more inbound. Oh, okay, good. Give me that freezy gel. So, oh. but this is cool too. This is like a bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, because has- I'm mine. Mine is literally. At this point. So what was the original? 500. And yeah, this is like 2K 2, now. Yeah. You got to roll it first to get it going. Well, it hasn't been used yet. I'll just keep. Oh, it's already going. Okay, cool. We're going to give this a whirl. Mm-hmm. A, that stuff is phenomenal. What do you do with that? It's like a bomb, like a rub. So like like well, right now. I it's go, like that, but but without the menthol. I actually, uh, I went and had my first massage ever, uh, which was great. Did you get a happy ending? I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um. Because I have a knot underneath one of my shoulder blades mm-hmm. that I think is like the size of a tennis ball. Yep. Uh, no, I tried this and I've, I've I've had it for like two months and yeah. it would not go away. Yeah. Um, to the point where it was waking me up at night because it was like seizing my neck right. right here and shit. Because it it was so big, it was pinching that nerve cluster mm-hmm. that runs underneath your your fucking shoulder blade. My wife tried to help me with it, fucking Theragun, like the whole nine yards. And uh, actually, for Valentine's Day, my customers at my store actually all got together and got me. My wife and I, this huge fucking Valentine's Day card that said, you make me complete. Oh, nice. And then they all signed the inside of it. But then they gave <laughs> us uh, uh, two gift certificates to massage heights. Cool. For like a deep tissue massage. Yeah. And uh, so I went and got my first one done. And it like started to break it up. Yeah. 
but uh, but now I can like feel it coming back. So this, where I could be like, okay, Caitlin, I need you I to mean, put this on yep. like your elbow and then just fucking that. Like so, the, the old freeze gel, five hundred milligram one. Yeah, is when I I've had knots like that, and that's the only stuff I'll put it on for like two days straight, like a couple times a day on the knot, and eventually like. After a couple of days, the knot goes away. I'm, it's already kicking pretty good. Okay, yeah, so. it works, and it works so fast. It's crazy because I loved the old stuff, and it actually like worked. But this thing is fucking deep. This, it, like it's yeah, yeah. So I, I think the, I need I think I need more horsepower. You, you got it right there in your hand. Fucking a. <laughs> yeah. Fucking a. Uh, they make good shit. They make good shit, and it's not gimmicky, which I think is probably my favorite thing about it. Yeah, it works, and it's not working on the gimmick. Like right. even the packaging isn't. No, you know, it's, it's not just, a bunch of holograms and flowers. I, I and love shit that everywhere. it's not like 46 different colors and cartoonish and like Cheech and Chong marketing. Right. <laughs> not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like every other fucking CBD I mean, it's, company. It's, it's not There's, gimmicky. Yeah. It's not the whole like, hey, it's almost pot. It's yeah. like, no. This is, no, this actually helps you. It's a cannabinoid <laughs> derivative. It, like, it's, yeah. there's a lot of shit that is. For external use only. Don't put it in your butt. Don't use it in your eyes. I mean... You probably could. You just don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Store in a cool location out of direct sunlight and keep out of reach of children. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's not here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, anyways, oh, wellness.us. Go over there. Uh, Is it still still the same one? Yep. Order off your order? Yep. Free Free 25. 25. So go over there. Uh, and uh, buy lots of shit because they they were having processing issues, so they have some catching up to do. The company's fine, but yeah, they still lost. Jesus, what two months? Three months worth of sales. Yeah, and it was bad. And it all, all it came down to was the uh, um, the uh, the credit card process. Yeah, but they needed the certification, the certification reports. So this says, "Do not apply to burns, wounds, or broken skin." I'm going to find a cut somewhere and I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to test the waters. Do it. I don't know if I have any today. <laughs> right around the neck. Anyways, uh, I've been here in a while. How you always been? Good. I feel like we haven't done this. in. A, oh yeah. We did skip a week. Skipped a week. Didn't Shit. We? We missed one. Yeah. Where were we? We were. Everybody. Everywhere. had Shit going. Yeah. So I don't even remember. It's Wednesday and this week's been a damn. It's been a month. But, uh, yeah, I feel like I haven't seen you boys in a while. It's been a minute. I, well, I haven't seen you since we, uh, bike ride. Yeah. No, that's not true. It was like the week after the week after there was the, we came here and hung out. Yeah. There was the hang out in the back and that was, Mm -hmm. that was it. I think it was the last time I saw you. Yeah. So it's been a minute, but uh, the world's still weird. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, Fuck it's weird. It's all, yeah. <laughs> and now the. Uh, you know how weird the world is? The political entertainment network is up and running oh, again, God. which is awesome. You know how weird the world is? Mike Tyson is about to fight a social media influencer. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Now, if I, if I was going to be a betting man. It, okay, if you're going to be a bet man, who are you going to put it on? Tyson. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, me too. I'll put it on Jake Paul. What, what I think is hilarious is Jake Paul wants to be considered real so bad. Yeah, but he hasn't fucked but, it up yet. But the thing is, that, <laughs> but everybody he fights is either retired or whatever. And I'm like, he's like, well, I'm going to fight Tyson. I'm like, he's 60. Yeah, but you know what? Him fighting Tyson's going to make more money than him yes. fighting anybody. And at this point, he and his brother don't care other than just stacking money. Yeah. Like, this isn't really about confirming that he's a good fighter. Well, I don't even... I, because if it was, it wouldn't be... I don't think... There wouldn't be all the restrictions on Ty, Tyson in a completely unrestricted for Paul. What oh, are, I don't know. What are the this? restrictions? So, uh, so Paul can use any performance-enhancing drugs. He has to do no drug testing. Tyson okay. does. Tyson actually huh. has to hit weight. Paul doesn't. What weight are they fighting at? 185. Oh, geez. they're both there. Like, I, I mean, that's not. But so, yeah, but he he doesn't have to come weigh in. Tyson does. Tyson yeah, but that's has to, probably close to his walking around weight anyway. Tyson has to weigh in. He has to drug test. Paul doesn't have to. So he can be on any PEDs he wants. 
and at thing, any point, good the, thing weed isn't a PED. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and at any point in the fight, Paul's allowed to tag in his brother and Tyson has to do a two on one fight. What? Yep. What? So this is I not a straight heard of any up. of this. So it's in the contract. I'm I'm trying to find. I, I I saw something about that, and I'm trying to find like an ESPN article or from like a, a You're someone not that's because this is a Netflix fight. The fight's on Netflix. Yeah, it yeah, it's live on Netflix. I'm just no. I'm looking for like a report of someone it, to yeah. be like because that's wild, and I would assume it's, someone. Yeah. Would so is ES- it like WWE though, where like they have to tag, like they physically have to touch gloves? So, but so this is not a straight up fight. Hmm. It like. And Tyson still agreed to it. Was still like, yeah, fuck it. Both of you get in there and be on whatever gym yeah, you want to. I'm like, he's still going to rock your fucking world. Well, and he's going to make a fucking ass yeah. ton of money. Well, so then I saw a report that was talking about your average person's punch hits at 150 PSI. Like your average, okay. like a non-boxer, yeah. like just a, yeah. an average punch. Paul's, I guess, is measuring it like just shy of 800 PSI. Okay. But he's he's a, a trained fighter. Yeah. Like I'll give him that. He yeah. he puts the work in. He yeah. does. Tyson's last measured punch was at just shy Which of sixteen hundred psi. Well, when was his last? Two punch? years ago. Okay. Okay. Two years ago, yeah. when he, because he was doing the um, he was promoing that at home boxing trainer okay. thing or whatever. Because they and they wanted to show like that it wouldn't break, so, so they let Tyson hit it so at like full for, bore. For example. If you take, say, a foam ball in a cannon tube and I shoot you with 150 PSI or 800 or 1600, uh, it's going to be yeah. a fuck ton of difference there. And I don't the, know if that's by the way, how they're measuring On a boxing punch, it's energy on target. Yeah. So the amount of force <laughs> that you're actually being impacted with is at 1600. So you're saying yeah. launching it at 1600, you're going to have fall off. Well, you get it point blank. It, yeah. I was going to stand in front of the can and we'll yeah. see what so, happens. <laughs> 1600 PSI would suck. Oh, that, would, that wouldn't be fun. Yeah. I didn't but, know uh, that was that. Yeah. It's not a straight up fight. Yeah, that's oh, weird. Fuck. So I not only, not only is, would he, was he trying to convince a boxer literally twice his age to come out of retirement. But it's funny and that fight they still him, have but, the odds in Tyson's favor. Yeah. No. With all of this extra shit that Paul gets. That's and Tyson fun. still was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll kill you. Who cares? I wouldn't want to get in the ring with Tyson. Have you seen his training? If I had a nine millimeter nasty. Have you seen his training? Because they've been showing all this whole like Paul like working the ring. No, I know. Tyson working the ring. And it's still, I can't watch his hands. It's just like, it's just a blur. Like I said, like it's, I I would not get in the ring with him with a nine mil. (laughs) No, because if you shot him, you just piss him off. (laughs) But I don't know if I'd hit him. In the Tyson training videos. Don't watch anything else besides the look on the trainer's face. It's just fear. And he's just like, <gasps> <laughs> yeah. it's like, fuck. <laughs> well, I mean, or Tyson's face. It's just hate. It's just hate. Even when he's training. Or watch yeah. his feet. Yeah. Because his feet are wild. Because it's not the, he looks like he's flat footed all the time. Yeah. But when you watch his feet, his feet are just, all of a sudden his stance is just in different positions in the ring. Now that it's was, almost like he's like popping forward. And that was like, also a tell on Mike Tyson's punch out on Nintendo. That's very yeah, true. We <laughs> watching, it was watching his feet. Yeah. They actually, there was a video about Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo predicted this in 1988. <laughs> and it's because the, the first, it's your character. The what, little white guy. The little white guy's name was Paul. <laughs> and, it showed, <laughs> and then it showed Tyson. And, uh, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, Tyson's still fast as fuck. God damn, he's so fast. And he was wearing remarkably small shorts. So the reason I want to see Jake Paul win is just like all these other fucking fights, right? If the person that everyone thinks is going to win doesn't win, they fight again. Yeah. And then they fight again. Like there's, you know what I mean? So if Tyson loses his first one, there's going to be two more fights. But do you know why? Because they tried to convince Tyson to come out of retirement for a fight like five or six years ago. Yeah. And he said he didn't want to and wasn't training anymore because that's what brought the homicide out in him. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so, and he was like, but not training and all that kind of stuff. Like if I'm not in the combat mindset, I don't have, I don't have that animal instinct. The hate in my heart. And, and, but when he trains, it's a fucking switch and it just flipped. And now watching him train, I'm like, Oh, you're going to kill this man. It like, and I, I think at this point, I think Tyson's willing to fight him as a whole, like, all right, God damn it. 
you're not a boxer. It like, and I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna answer this question for everybody. You know, you know when you when you pay for a paid per view, and the fight's over in three seconds. Like, I don't know if Netflix is gonna charge anything or not. I'm gonna, They're not. I'm gonna pay for to be it. the. I think the second. I think it's the second live event they did. The first one was like a tennis match, and nobody gave a shit. The first one, I believe, was Chris Rock's comedy special. No, 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 for Netflix Sports. Oh, the live sports gotcha. thing. I think the first one was that that the Netflix Slam, and nobody watched it because it was like, but, oh, maybe I didn't even know that happened. In, exactly. In my <laughs> in my perfect world, I'm watching this fight. I don't care if I've paid a hundred dollars to watch it. As long as Eric, our sales rep, is there, uh, I want to uh, be there. I want to be where he is watching this fight. Big Mike Tyson fan. Never seen the guy happier. I've never been that happy in my whole life. This is when he met Mike Tyson. Um, but if it's if Mike Tyson knocks out Jake Paul in the first three seconds, I would be it. so happy. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, The last Mike Tyson pay-per-view I paid for was when he fought uh, that other white dude. They got his $7 million payday and got knocked out in like, the first 40 seconds or whatever. I don't even remember who that It was, was one of Tyson's last fights. Yeah. And he obliterated this kid. Yeah. I mean, the, to the point to where, like, his corner and stuff, like, threw the... This dude was out on his feet and just, like, stumbling <laughs> around, and they threw the towel in and shit. We're like, like get him the fuck out. Like, <laughs> we actually like a him. chance. And I was in, like, 90... And I got nothing against Jake Paul. Uh, I just... I, I don't... I don't... I don't really have anything against him, but I'm not for him either. I mean, he looks like an idiot. Yeah. But then again, he's also wearing a Lost Boys. He's got the whole Kiefer Sutherland going. See, on. I'm, Lost Boys, I'm like thinking the dangly like, earring and the blonde. I'm thinking bullet. like the, the five year plan, right? So imagine if he does win, who's he going to fight next? Well, yeah, right. He's, does he's it, definitely opens, running out of big it, name? But it opens the door to fight anybody else. Yeah. Well, any fighter with an AARP card. Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. Like I, I feel like <laughs> he hasn't fought an active fighter. No, I know that. I, I'm well aware of that. I went through his record last time we were talking about this on. The, on I don't know if it's this show or not, but you know, I give him credit, right? Because he's oh, I will, willing credit, right? to fucking yeah. do this. He and his brother both are and, willing and to just go get their ass kicked. He's put like, himself in a position or win, where or he win. where he can make money and do this, and he's willing and a lot more able than I ever would be. Like, you know but, what I mean? Like, fuck. And but, he's, he's got that, and he's used all of this to leverage against yeah. his drink brand and his he's podcast not, he's, he's and like all dumb. that shit. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Not saying that at all. Yeah. I, I love the hustle. Yeah. I just. So he, he, he has fought one active boxer and that's his only loss on his card. Right? Oh, re, who was uh, that? Tommy Fury. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but there was. That was early on, but no, it was split was, decision. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he didn't get like knocked out. Or no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, that's fair. Tommy Fury, Tyron Woodley. He, I think his most recent I do was think, Nate Diaz. I do think all of this comes from, I, I honestly do think Jake Paul is a massive fan of the sport. Yes. I really do. Well, he, I, I believe yeah. that deep down, that yeah. he is a massive fan of the sport. Yeah. Well, and he's got talent. I mean, but I think right. he's got so much other stuff going on that the idea of trying to get into like the WBA and like, actually be a yeah. professional boxer is just like okay, i could but i'd have to give up all of this other shit that i have to go be a full-time boxer and i don't i don't think that's something he wants he has figured out a way to participate in a sport that he is a massive fan of On a, at a high level at a high level and it's far more profitable yeah and he doesn't have to give up the management of any of his other shit so I think it's very similar. more power to him. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't give a fuck how much money it was. I'm not getting in the ring with Tyson. No. There's no fucking way. Well, I don't care what there, they offer. It. No, there's a dollar amount for sure. And it also depends. Like if, if I, if I had whatever, nine fights or eight fights that he already had and I trained to be a boxer, like I uh, will give him, he is fucking jacked. But you know, like if you're, that's like, you know what? I want to play hockey against Wayne Gretzky. Or I want to fucking play. I want to pitch against Big Poppy before yeah. he retired. Even now, after he retired, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like when you're in a sport, you're training, you're doing. You want to be able to play with the the best of that sport, right? But okay, ten million dollars. You fight Tyson in six months. What's your game plan? No, <laughs> I call all my friends that can get me gear, and I just see, it, and then I I live. Do I get a forward? Like. 
Do I get like a 5% front? So just so that I can, I don't have to do <laughs> anything my, else. My game plan in the next six months is to line up investors to take that 10 million and turn it into a hundred million uh, right. in the next 10 years. But, yeah. I have to <laughs> but like I, I'm hitting but the I, easy button and I'm going in there like I would go in there right now. And I'm just, just going to get the knock. It, just, the, just I'm just going to get knocked the fuck out. And like, I would, I train. I would. Uh, I think I would train fun. so that I, I'll, I'll practice a little bit. But, so that I but it, don't look okay, like but, it, but it's like, if but, you're going to be a Navy SEAL. So you're going to get in cold water for the next six months and life's going to suck. Or you just go through the fucking training and it sucks once. I'm not, I'm not boxing. Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck for six months. I'm going to get the shit beat out of me. No. One night. One round, 10 Be, seconds, typi- I'm done. Typically, when I'm you're out. training to box, you don't get the shit beat. I'm going to train not to die. No, and that's But I you, train, you train on technique. <laughs> you train entire, on offense and defense. I'm going to train on defense to the not die. The entire reason I would be training is literally to harden my body enough to take the shot. Yes. Because it's, it's going to put me it's, down. I don't even need to harden my body. I just need to learn how to take a shot. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> and so One of them's going to knock me out. The rest of them I have to is take. It, okay. If it's okay. a $10 million, <laughs> right. it's a $10 right. million dollar payment, so I'm going pro- to like a- 5% up front so that like I know everything's paid. Right. So that for the next six months. <laughs> this covers just, my life insurance. I can just train. <laughs> Train. Okay, okay. And so I don't have to like, well, I can only train when I'm not doing this, that, and the right. other. I can just train. It, then, yeah. And I'm literally going to do it towards like yeah, five then, days a week. How about, training, how about and like, then one day a week, like, a guy just It's like, okay, me. I'm going to Iraq. I'm getting $10 million to get blown up in an ID and get a TBI. If you got half. I'm a, not going to practice by getting blown up and a see, TBI yeah, there's a for the first six punched. months. It, it, like, okay, I'm just going to go now, get the TBI. Real, real talk. <laughs> Real talk, <laughs> right? If any one of us got 5% six months prior to cover everything leading up to it, we might not make it. Yeah, That's $500,000 for six months. Yeah. Yeah, but to me, <laughs> $500,000 knowing that I've got $9.5 million on the other end. Yeah. Yeah, but there, I have a feeling there's not going to be much training getting done. Sure it would. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's zero. Nobody, training. I'm nobody going into said that I had bitch. To show up to the fight over. <laughs> yeah, you just have to pass your your performance enhancing drug test. Not on these contracts. We fucking like That's the worst crazy. thing. I think is you go into that fight in six months thinking, you know what? I stand a chance of something. No, no, I'm just going to go in oh, there no, and no, take no. it. It wouldn't like, matter. Oh, like bitch, I'll, gi- I'll, gi- I'll give you a million dollars. It could be half, it could be half speed. This it shit. could be Jake Paul. <laughs> and they'd be like, this is, you have to fight. And I'd be like, oh, he's got fucked me up. It, like, I don't see, but for 10 mil, eh, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that 500,000 up front and find a doctor that'll put in nerve blockers all over my body. So I just don't feel anything. You're not going to feel <laughs> it anyway. You're going to be knocked the fuck out. Right. <laughs> I'd be like, Hey, what's that shit? What's that localized anesthesia that like, I can still function. I just don't feel anything. Oh, that's even better. That way you don't and go down and like, get two TBIs. No, no <laughs> one and done. I'm just fucking just, I'm going to get knocked out. <laughs> two TBIs. I'm going to get knocked out. I can totally picture Scott like, fucking bell rings and he walks in hands down by his waist and he just sticks his chin out. No, <laughs> no it'd be like this. Like I'm going to admit, you know, I'm gonna, like looks like a guard. Yeah. They just come okay, around. No. <laughs> I'll take the Would side you? shot. I don't want the undercut. I don't want the, the undercut. uppercut. The I uppercut. see. I don't want a body shot. Oh God, no. I w- so that's the only yeah. thing. Like I need to block like my <laughs> neck and my yeah. body and just leave everything else out. That's there. what I'm saying is I want to be just strong enough. <laughs> I'll, that take, somehow, I'll take the TBI. I don't want to piss I don't blood. Get the, if I don't get that arm dropped, I don't need you disconnecting a kidney, which is a <laughs> yeah. thing, by the way. That's like a thing. You can get hit so fucking hard. It literally disconnects can a kidney. Can you sell the disconnected one? I don't know. Like instead of reconnecting it, be like, you know what, doc, just take it. Let's put it on the black market. Yeah, no, <laughs> what's a kidney going for? Nah, I already I got two. I don't need if that. I'm getting 10. I could get 10.1. Fucking push the kidney. Oh, they go Sir, for your, the your kidney's exploded. It's no good to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> just slightly used. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to get fatter. So it's harder that's to like break going my like, kidney. Hey, do you want a new oil filter for your car? Or do you want this one that's already filtered some shit? Well, it depends if you go to Napa, if you get it from the guy in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> you you can't buy a kidney in Napa. <laughs> like when I had to go when I had to go get the M endorsement put on my license, they're like, "Do you want to continue to be an organ donor?" I was like, "Sure." Nobody wants them, but yeah. fucking <laughs> sure. I'm like, good, "Good luck." They're no good. To, my eyes are solid. You can have those. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh fuck! What else was in current events? Uh, let's see. Oh, 
Uh, after almost two years, the Uvalde police chief has announced his resignation. Yeah, that whole Uvalde situation. Like, the, the way so, they now, handled it, the way they're handling it. Like, if, it's, if I have the timeline right, he retired the day before the city council held a meeting to explain the report that found all the officers innocent of any wrongdoing on that day. Hmm. I, so I, he knew the report was coming out. He knew that the city council was going to have a meeting and trying to explain it to the residents. And he was just like, you know what? It's been two years and I, there's nothing I can do about this. And like, I'm out. Yeah. Like, why else would you do that the night before the day I, before? I don't know. Maybe. Like, other than you disagree with it. Do you know what I mean? Like, and there's nothing you can do. I don't know. It, what a, what a stain uh, on Texas. Well, it's, I don't know. I wouldn't even say Texas. It's a stain on, on departments yeah. and accountability for. Well, it's, so I, I think what we're seeing is even in, and I love my state. I do. But I think what we're seeing more and more is that we have allowed. We want, we want and keep putting in so much bureaucracy and getting anything done mm -hmm. that now we're seeing it creep forward. Like, yeah. so y'all have been in my place. I sell no prepared food. I have beer, but I sell no prepared food. Right. It's like candy, mm -hmm. beef jerky. Everything's in a bag. Nothing's temp controlled. Nothing gets made. Right. According to the state of Texas, I do not need a food service license. Now I have to have a health certificate because I serve beer. Yeah. But I don't need a food service license, mm -hmm. according to the state of Texas. And for two years, I operated that way. And then some city of San Antonio health inspector was upstairs inspecting the restaurants, walked by my place, and came in, saw the bar, and was like, well, this is my district, and I've never inspected you guys. And I'm like, wait a minute. I have a certificate of occupancy <laughs> and a TABC license. Yeah, I know COSA health inspection came in here. Yeah. And the only thing they told me was that I couldn't serve coffee from my espresso machine because I had no way to wash the coffee pot in my espresso machine. <laughs> yeah. You can't sell it, but you can take donations. So, by the way, I had to <laughs> render it inoperable, which means I just had to unplug it. That, that, so. <laughs> <laughs> While he was there. Well, I, I literally went, so if it's inoperable, you'll sign the light. I would have like, yeah, grabbed a sledgehammer. And I literally, no, that's why I have that ridiculously expensive espresso yeah, machine yeah. in my kitchen. It, like, it's, it, now it's in my house. <laughs> and uh, so he comes in and he was like, all right, you need to call and schedule this thing. So we called and I was like, I thought I was following all the laws. I have no, he was like, oh, well, the city of San Antonio has a non-prepared food license. That you have to get. It's essentially a license for me to sell Snickers bars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So I had to call this guy's supervisor to schedule a time for this guy to come out. Right. So he comes out, never steps foot behind anything, literally walks in, gets all of my information, never looks at a thing, leaves, and comes back with my inspection and my fee schedule. Yeah. Says you need to take this and your COO and you need to go downtown to the business services office that's downtown San Antonio. So cool. So he brings me this thing. I finally get free time. That's what I got to do fucking Monday morning. Just drive down, do this whole. So I go down there, walk in the door, have to put all of my shit in a bag and then go through the metal detector where there's two cops. It, then took that, Talked to the chick at the front desk who got all of my information and took my phone number and said, we'll text you when the window's ready for you to deal with it. Okay. Before I could get to the seat to sit down, my phone goes off. <laughs> hey, your window's ready. Okay. So I go over there, I give her and she's like, sit down, I have to generate an invoice. And I was like, I thought, but the fee schedule's out here. So like, yeah, but you need an invoice. And I'm like, okay. So she gives me the invoice and I pull out my card to give it to her. And she's like, oh no, I can't take payment. You have to go down to the cashier right. and pay them. I get down to the cashier and she's behind bulletproof glass with a microphone. And I was like, I'm starting to understand why the fuck that piece of glass is there. <laughs> so she takes my payment, gives me a receipt and says, okay, go back to the original girl that you were talking to. Oh God. So then I have to walk to the other side of the building and give her my thing with the receipt so that she can print out my certificate saying that I've paid and gives it back to me for me to find out that it expires in six months. 
because of their scheduling. Right. Did they at least prorate you? No. no. So based on the cost of the license, though, I did the math. Yeah. So I sell snacks and stuff because I sell beer. Yeah. So it's literally just a, I make like 20 cents when yeah. I sell fucking a candy bar to somebody. Right. Right. So I did the math for me to cover the cost of the candies that I sell and the cost of the license. I have to sell a thousand units to cover the cost of the license before I have to sell a thousand units before I break even on the food and the license. And I have to do it again in six months. Are you, and I'm are like, you open seven days a week? Yeah. So you need to sell six units a day for the next six months. Just to cover what I just paid. to just to break even. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so and it's like, wh- why? What to sell a fucking snick? I dealt with five people, five people, to be able to sell a Snickers bar. Well, that's why that's why the the fee for it is so expensive because yeah. they pay the salary for those five people. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing is, I'm like, so for five, uh. I had five people to do this. Oh, and. It, that was just the licensing fee. And then I had to pay the inspection fee based on $112 an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to which the inspector told me, by the way, the inspectors don't get any of that money. Yeah, they get they get paid 20 bucks an hour. Yeah. I'm here from the government. Or I'm from the government and I'm here to help. No, the reason <laughs> I bring that up is that was all of that for me to sell a fucking Snickers bar. Yeah. If you want to know why it took two fucking years to figure out what happened with the Uvalde police thing. Yeah. That's why we put that much bureaucracy into being able to sell a fucking candy bar. So they, it, uh, like, from what I read, they hired a, an outside attorney to, I don't know, conduct the report for lack of better words. Well, um, I, I don't know if it was just an attorney, but it was a investigator. Outside yeah, mediator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but one of the big things is, you, you know, especially if you live in that community, like I have questions and that report doesn't answer them. Yep. So who can I speak with that can answer these questions? And it's can't. not like, oh, well, I, you know, I have an issue or, you know, somebody put a fucking stop sign on my, on my road in front of my house and I don't like it. No, I lost a child. Yeah. yeah and can you imagine if it's one of us, right? yeah. we're there. We're prepared to go in and shoot this fucking guy. Oh, nobody would have stopped me. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you they right were now. Well, what, are, what are you going to do? Are you going to shoot a cop? No, I'm going to let a cop shoot me as I'm trying to fucking go in there. Yes. Yeah. That's it. I agree. But look, here's the deal. I'm 77 either, minutes. Yeah. I'm, they either, sat on I'm either in the hospital or I'm in prison because somebody pulled a trick. 77 like, minutes. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to lie. Like saved a bunch of kids. I'll go to prison for that. It's like, yeah. Why are you in jail? Well, Well, see, like I heard guns. All of us. They didn't respond. All of us. I shot this kid. Yeah. All of us. They put me in prison for it. Would risk our lives to save a classroom of kids. And I don't even like kids. Right. And I'd still do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I. (sighs) Yeah. If you're a cop and you disobeyed an order to not do something. That that's what, an order I'll disobey. What's but what's your penalty? Like you get fired? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna tell you right fucking now. Fucking fire me. If one of those cops oh my God. I'm gonna tell you right now, if one of those cops had said fuck that and went in there and solved that problem, he would want for nothing for the rest of his life. Yeah. Somebody would have stepped up and gone. Well, it, it ended up being a fucking off duty guy that worked the borders yeah. or something, yeah. right? Yeah, one of the board tag guys. Yeah. Yep. It, it, that's what I'm saying. Is that if that cop had been like, no, fuck that, and walked in there and handled it. Yeah. Somebody would have stepped up and been like, but it, like, first off, all your legal fees are covered. Yeah. You're not paying for fuck off. Yeah. And so if, if I knew, like, if, if I was in that position, I had a kid at that school and I was there when that happened and I got to the scene and everyone's just fucking standing around with their thumbs up their ass. Yeah. Like, I couldn't just sit there. Fuck no. No matter who said fucking what. Yeah. Fuck no. Like, you're not fuck. allowed in there. My kid's in there. Yeah. Well, you're not allowed. Okay, so who from you is going in there? Well, nobody yet. Get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot me. Shoot yeah. me in the back, yep. motherfucker. That's it. As I'm going You don't to have the balls to shoot this guy that's killing the kids. Yeah. Shoot me in the motherfucking back. And don't fucking miss because if you do, you're going to hit that school. Yeah. I. It's fucking terrible. Was, was there any lawsuits brought against 
Oh, there has to be a oh, bajillion. Oh, my God. I hope they fucking bury that goddamn police department. Yes. But this, it, it also, it comes down to accountability. And this is yeah. the problem with- Every the, cop this, should have been fired, resigned, or forced the fuck out by the fucking people that and to be live honest with in you, that town. If anybody in Uvalde is hearing this, get rid of your fucking city council. Absolutely. The fact that it took two fucking years to get this done, get rid of your city council. Yeah. These people don't represent I you. purposely, like it was a couple months after that happened, I sped through the town hoping to get pulled over so I could talk shit. I really did. Mm-hmm. Uvalde survivor, survivors file a $27 billion class yeah. action lawsuit Good. against the police and others. Sue that fucking yep. town into oblivion. Yeah. Bankrupt that fucking, the, the whole area of Texas. Fuck them. Like you can't protect kids. Fuck off. Well, and this is, this is, we've talked about this on the show before about the pendulum swinging too far. Yeah. And we are now at points in this country where the pendulum is but, swung but too why, far. But why, why in Texas? I could see this happening if you were a cop in fucking Washington, right? If you were in Portland and you're worried about getting fucking thrown in jail or, you know, but it, God damn it. This is fucking Texas. Every Texas cop, like, if you're a cop, I don't know. I was in the infantry, right? Because even my if, fucking wet dream was to have people shoot at me. I, I don't yeah. think you can put it on the state, though, because there's been other police officers in the state. I, that I know. Is insane. I, yeah. You have to put it on this fucking chief. Exactly. It has to be. This it, chief should have said, go, 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 go. It does not go any higher than that local department. Yeah. There's no nobody else that was involved. If that shit popped off and two minutes later, that chief was like, go, go, yeah, go. The, the, the next press conference when the chief got up there, he was like, yeah, you're goddamn right. He was like, go ahead. You're not touching any yeah. of my guys. I take full responsibility for yeah. this. Yeah. I save kids. You have a problem with it. Yes. Fuck come off. To me. Yeah. Again, he, ah. he, the entire country is stepping up and going like, he pays no legal fees. He does nothing. Yeah. We're getting him the best lawyer. Yeah. Like this yeah. is. To save kids, but I, no. I couldn't, Instead, um, every cop and the chief, and, but this literally is the definition of complacency kills. You kicked back and went, ooh, did we do a risk analysis on what happens if we go in there and do our fucking job? Yeah. yeah. Maybe the optics on that aren't going to be great when whatever news source gets a hold of it. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what news source you listen to, but if you were so fucked in the head that you have a problem with anything, I don't care how you spin it, of cop killed school shooter. Yeah. It, like, if you have a problem now, with I that. Now, I can understand the fear of you being a chief. Then take the uniform off. Well, and sending in your people that you might accidentally kill a kid. Then take and, the uniform off. I know. But those decisions are what we call hard decisions. Well, and hard decisions are made all the time by people in that, right? If you accidentally shoot a kid, but you save however many others, right? Like, fuck. But that's why training, that's why, like, that, that, oh, my God. That I, shouldn't be the worry no. going into that situation. No, you need to trust your officers. We had the same thing when I was a sniper. Our, our fucking, sometimes our chain of command would be like, oh, we don't trust them to do this. Yeah. See, but. Right? I, fuck that. I, I have a problem with the, what if you shoot a kid? First off. Shoot the guy with the gun. Mm-hmm. And if you're not confident enough that in a CQB environment, hitting a man-sized target that's wielding the weapon, yeah. if you're not confident enough with your weapon, yeah. take the uniform off. Like, there's I've just, read, there's I've, just standards here that's like, <sighs> you take the uniform off. I Put it down. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I've read the report. Dumb. He was, there was an outside window that led into this classroom and there was no fucking marksman that just walked around and shot this motherfucker through the glass. Yeah. I don't understand it. Fuck that. Don't almost every cop now has some sort of rifle platform in the back of their cruiser. Yeah. Almost all of them do now. Mm-hmm. There's a outside facing window. You don't need a fucking marksman. Well, you need somebody who can hit the fucking target, but yes. A man-sized target at 25 meters. If you can't do that with any rifle platform, I agree. take the uniform off. Yeah. It, like like I can under, or not. Take I can I can understand off. I can and I like tactically Maybe if you do a breach and you you know when you're going to go in, he's going to kill a bunch of kids. I Okay, I understand that. There's an outside window into this classroom 
Well, you guys remember the you video. You fucking work the pie and you shoot this motherfucker. You guys remember the video when they were inside. They were in the hallway. Yeah. They were in that T intersection in the hallway. And one of the fucking officers is fucking around on his phone. Yeah. Like, bro. Dude, I think that was the Fired. officer. No, that was the officer who was calling his wife who also got killed and their yeah, child. Yeah, that was, she was a, she was a teacher at the school. Yeah, yeah. He, he was trying to get information. He was trying to get locale information, what rooms, which what is even layout. more fucked up. Like what? I know it's a fuck. Yeah. That police chief shouldn't have retired. And I'm telling you right about now, a week after this, like no wrongdoing should have painted a wall. Fuck off. Just yeah. Fuck that guy. Take he made uniform off. Those were terrible yeah. fucking. Yeah, the decisions. report said they were all exonerated from, yeah. from that day. Like, no, it's crazy. Not at all. Oh, exonerated. Fine. Can't be charged. Fine. But you're all fucking fired. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Take the uniform off. We can't fire you for not having any balls. Or we can't throw you in prison for not having any oh, balls. Can we introduce that we on any uniform you. service? Just be like, well, you're fired. Cowardice. You're fired for cowardice. Yeah, there should be. Like, I, th I think that used to be a thing. It, we, we, well, it's still in the Army. Exhibition of cowardice is still something that you can actually be charged with. Well, I, good. Uh, but it should just be everywhere. But like, but because that's what this was. Yeah. If we really want to boil it down, all of it, every cop there from but the, every patrol officer all the way up to that chief, this was an exhibition of cowardice. And I, I can see where the individual officers torn because his chain of command is telling him, fuck no. However, in the, in the army, right? You, you follow lawful orders. An unlawful order, we would break in a fucking heartbeat. If our chain of command said kill this innocent person, we would have been like, fuck no. At if, the same time, if our chain of command would have said, said, hey, don't engage and let all of those innocents die. Yeah. We would have said, fuck no. Yeah. yeah fuck it. Charge like, me. Yeah. Like, charge I mean, me. I just don't understand. I, I can't comprehend it. I just can't. But this comes down to that. There's an old ass phrase and everybody in the army's heard it. And we've heard it so many times that it's played out. And this is, but it's, and it's the whole, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by yeah. six. Yeah. Well, this is an example of, well, now you got a whole bunch of people being carried by six. Yeah. And you're not getting judged by 12 because you're a fucking coward. Yeah. yeah. It, like, take the uniform off. I'm not saying I'd be a great cop. I also don't wear the fucking uniform. Yeah. That's why I'm not a cop. <laughs> yeah. I. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not because of the cowardice or anything like that. It's because... It's because of the stupid fucking political bullshit. Like, I know it's right, and I know it needs to get done, and I can't fucking do it because somebody said I can't. Matter of fact, if you want to know why most of us weren't career military. Yeah, the, I think I just explained it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this isn't even why we aren't cops. This is also, like, why all of us are have the veteran status. It was a... No, it's also, I think it's also why... None of us we are self anybody employed. else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough on this. What else we got? Well, to yeah. stay on the... Uh, Who else can we beat up on? To stay on the cop scenario, this is my current favorite one because right. it's nothing bad has happened yet. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania <laughs> has now announced and announced this. They put it out in public. This is... That between 3 a.m. and 7 a.m., you know, when there's nothing but idiots out and about, there will be no responses to 911 calls, no patrol officers, and no officers in any of the stations <laughs> to save for budgetary reasons. At least you could get to work on time. Because I'm driving 120 that's, motherfuckers. That's a, you know what? That's a four-hour purge, isn't it? I like, wanna, it's just a, it's just a I want to know what their budget is. And I want to know how much that those four hours actually cost them. Oh, it's like it's probably astronomical. Because you look at payroll alone. You know what I want to know? How much is it going to cost to get insured for anything in Pittsburgh? <laughs> oh, God yeah. damn. Right. Yeah. You could crime spree on your way to work and then speed to get to work on time. Like, I mean, can you imagine the number of break-ins, vandalism, damage, like the shit that's going to happen because you know there is zero response. Yeah. In Pennsylvania. Yeah. So this is not – Pennsylvania is a weird state. Like it's – Kind of red, kind of blue. Well, like it's only it's the a, classiest of the classy live in Pittsburgh. It's also, big yeah. facts. <laughs> yeah. Is, isn't Pittsburgh like the one of the drug capitals of the world? Pittsburgh got to about 1988 and said, "We're oh, good. This is it. We're <laughs> stay here. We love this. Yep. The yeah. IROC Z is the best hey, car. I love an IROC Z. <laughs> but that's all they drive. 
Yeah. That, those in El Caminos. I've seen some Monte Carlos. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of those. My favorite are the ones that they get the new Monte Carlos, like the Dale Earnhardt edition. Yeah. And then they drive that around like it's an old Monte Carlo. And he's like, well, oh, it, dude, it's not. Honestly. <laughs> oh, so remember when we used to be able to get classic car plates that were 20 years old? Yeah. Bitch. I know. What year was a 20 year old car? It's 2004 now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine this still be considered a classic? Every car vehicle I've owned, except for the past three, four. We're now are now considered classic cars. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, every single one I own except for the last four vehicles. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so I'm. I'll be watching the whole Pittsburgh situation because uh, I've still got some friends up there. I did my last two years of high school in Pittsburgh. And thanks, Army. <laughs> my, my dad was like. My dad got stationed. And uh, before clarity of orders, it was like, hey, you're going to get your first command because he made captain. Yeah. It's like, fucking A. And they're like, you're going to be the commander of ROTC at the University of Pittsburgh. Oh, I was like, God. Oh, oh. That's, that's an active oh. duty position. I thought most ROTC, oh, college though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. University of Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But like a so high, these are guys high school actually ROTC go- is a retirement it, like yeah, you that's like you used then, to serve and now you go and, yeah, and do yeah. it or whatever. But this is an actual, like, because these guys are, if they finish the program, they actually assess. Yeah, yeah. Like that. It's, uh, that makes so, sense. Uh, but, oh, fuck, my last two years. <clears throat> that's the whole reason I skipped my junior year of high school. It was just like, how fucking fast can I get out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? <laughs> <laughs> so I went from being a sophomore to a senior. I was just like, it, fuck this. I doubled up on my courses and shit. I was yeah. just like, I just, I just want out. <laughs> I lived there for two years. I think I saw the sun for seven days. Uh, <laughs> that's gross. There's always something falling out of the sky. It was fucking terrible. But uh, yeah, it it a horrible city. And so when I heard that they were doing this, I was like, that that sounds like Pittsburgh. Yeah. That's that sounds like Sixburg. But yeah, oh god. But because of that, I still have some friends that live up there and stuff. And I'm like, you own guns, right? <laughs> like, please tell me. Please tell me you own something more than a hockey stick. Yeah. Don't be so, wrong. I wouldn't want to get a hit with a hockey stick either, but. They hurt. <laughs> so we just got through with the uh, primary. Uh, and now we have two two candidates that we can vote for. We're not shocked. We, we, it's not shocking. It's not shocking. It's uh, it's the insane and the senile. And that's. Yeah. But, man, he did good on the. On the. uh State of the Union address. Uh, he stood the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, because he's on drugs. He stood the whole time. I still have no idea what the fuck he said. <laughs> I, and I, I watched it twice <laughs> just to see if I could riddle it out. And it was. It, it was a lot of crazy talk. But um, yeah. it was. It, I. I. Oh God. So for a State of the Union address to talk about what you want to do. Yeah, I don't. Doesn't work for me. Well, but like, you're not, you're, I feel he like can't the state. Say what the state of the union is because that would be a. Well, he hey, did. I'm really bad at this. So it, he, he did his first sentence. It was within like the first five or 10 minutes of his speech. And he's like, he, you know, this is supposed to be about the state of the union. And I'm here to tell you the state of the union is strong <laughs> and it's good. <laughs> and then he goes into like 45 minutes of all the fucked up things, which yeah. is like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not even here, across, around the fucking world. And it's just like, dude, your your speechwriter should be fired. And then he, <laughs> no, that's probably the best speech he could have given. And then, oh, it was, but it wasn't anything. The five minute section of him just masturbating though was fucking weird. Well, that whole like, I fr- I, I missed that part. Well, it it was all of that masturbatory like. I was the vice president, the first black president, and the president to the first yeah. black female president. My favorite and, 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 part. Blah, 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 My like, favorite part when he looked at the Supreme Court. And talked mad shit at them. And their stoic mm. fucking response of not moving, no facial expressions. No, nothing. Nothing. Like I I like on like the, the uh Supreme Court is it's a like there's what it's what? It's What's, pretty balanced, right? Yeah, now, it's pretty actually. balanced. I mean I think I think it's four three right now. Yeah. But neither 
the Dem- Democratic or Republican. I actually, I don't have a problem with either any of the justices right now because right. the, the, the rules, the, the rulings that they have called down have all been, I mean, they have been letter of the law. Yeah. Like it has just yeah. been, and I'm like, I, that's, but that's what the Supreme Court should yeah. do. It should well, be this whole like, well, like I would be I pissed six off. six to three. I, I think would it's be, six. Yeah, it's six three, but it's still super bad. I would be pissed yeah. off though if a Republican Supreme Court justice just voted everything right. You know what I mean? Like you, it has to be by the law. But su- the Supreme Court needs to be very impartial. It has to separate itself from the parties. Yeah. It, it has to. And right now, based on the rulings that they've made so far, it has been. Like it's, the best yeah. part is this pissed off people on both sides. And that yeah. means they're doing that means right. the court. Yes. <laughs> yes. But when he said, when he said, you know, they overturned Roe versus Wade. No, they turned it over to the states. They well, didn't overturn. But it. he needs talking points. I know. Right. You know, but what he else is he going to talk about? He can't say how good he's been. Doing. But you know what? If you wanted to win points, you need to go like, I'm extremely proud of our Supreme Court and recognizing state autonomy. Like they're. But Whoever it, his speechwriter is, but the speechwriter and the and both sides, I was really disgusted by the fact that during certain statements, half of the half of Congress and shit was booing and shit. Like, well, the, I'm like, this is gross. This is it not is a sporting gross. event. Like, this is fucking get some decorum. It, like, yes, I agree. It, like, I like if he I says something that makes sense, and you're a Republican. He's a Democratic president. But if he says something that makes sense, for you to applaud or like acknowledge it. Or just like, or just don't. Like just don't. If you if you go yeah. like we should boo, no, you shouldn't. No, you should. You're a fucking congressman. Shut the fuck up. Right. Like you want to cheer? Okay. My favorite you part. You want to applaud. Other than that, shut your hole. My like, favorite part is when he's talking about like the economy and things that he's gonna like. Well, you know, I'm going to lower late fees and I'm going to, I'm going to, I want companies to. reveal this and, and they're going to do all this. Other, and, but my favorite part is Congress is like, yeah. And it's like, sit down and shut the fuck up. You've never had to pay a late fee. You've never had to get that prescription drug. Yeah. You've never been in a position where you even had to remotely understand what the fuck that means to the common person. Yeah. yeah. And when so you're fuck off. When your campaign is funded by private economy, and so you're never gonna vote or do anything to change the fact that you're gonna impact private economy profit. Yeah. Like you're not going to. Yeah. The only way that that's going to happen is they're gonna continue to play fuck fuck games and the people itself will end up shutting companies down. Yeah. Because they'll just go like, no, you get no fucking money. Justin, what's the name of that girl, the 22-year-old that got killed by the... Lake and Riley? Lankin, right? L-A-N-K-I-N, I think. Does it upset you that he said Lincoln? That she didn't even... That he, I'd, well, he, I don't think he knows his name. I don't know, so. if it, I don't know if it upsets me, but... Like, I, I actually respect the fact that he took the button... He acknowledged it. You guarantee, I guarantee it wasn't in his speech. That was off the cuff. He acknowledged it, right? Like, <clears throat> give him that props. Yes, he, if, he pronounced the name wrong. Now, but, hold on. If, if, if the president didn't already name drop people that didn't look like her in years prior and right. stand behind and support them 100%, yeah. doesn't care what happened, and then does this, I, it's not that it upsets me. It's just, it's pandering. Yeah. But I appreciated that he acknowledged it because I didn't think he was going to. So did you hear the interview with the, with but the when, parents? And that when, when Biden was being, it was touting that he's spoken to, you know, family members yeah. and blah, all this stuff. And they're like, yeah, we've never heard from him. I don't know if he claimed to ever have talked to them. But what I don't like is he apologized for calling the illegal an illegal. Yeah. Like that was fucked up. Yeah. Like yeah, he was fucking illegal. But and especially when you go back to sound bites from years ago yeah. when the Democrats are like, you know, if they're illegal, yeah. they shouldn't be here. But, and- but, well, I think he forgets <laughs> but, that that the- president that he was so grad, so proud to serve under actually had like some of the tightest fucking immigration laws ever yeah. it, like and but the narrative has changed all yeah. of a sudden it was this whole like then we got trump yeah who essentially just continued what obama did yeah. 
He added and actually stuff. he added some stuff, but he pulled some other stuff out. It like it it kind of didn't change much. But it was then at that point it was like fuck it they all can all come because that makes Trump look bad. But it, it was, was like it was literally on day one when he took office. Ob- uh, uh Biden fucking got away with all the Trump shit. Yeah, the travel ban and all. Like that did stuff. did away with all of it. And but so there, and but there was some shit from that that like I didn't like the travel ban. I didn't. I don't know. I I do think we need a better visa system. I do. I think we need a better visa system. So I. I don't, but I don't like my country living in fear. And that's, that's why I have a problem with travel bans. Travel bans are essentially, we're scared they'll do something. No. So I, then we will just, we'll no. just delete all of it because we're scared. I don't agree with that. I think the travel ban has to do with if the government that you're of the country you're coming from is completely fucked up and anti United States, then maybe there should be a ban. Well, you Un- can't come here from North Korea. And shit like that. Like that's only because you can't leave North Korea. So, <laughs> um, I mean, there's countries that we still have that with. It, the The problem I had with it is you can't call it a Muslim travel ban. You can't do that. No, anymore. and I don't think Trump ever did. Yes, oh. he did. No, he just named off a bunch of Muslim countries. So, and- but yeah, like, you want to tell me that if you're from Iran, you can't come here? Yep, totally agree. Okay. But like, right? Yeah, you. If it is a country that is recognized as having insane anti-American yeah. sentiment, yeah. yeah, you can't come here. Right. Now, you're from an Islamic country and you're trying to get out because they are oppressive. Right. And like I was going to say North Korea, right? If a North Korean makes it here, they probably have the most asylum claim as anybody who's ever fucking crossed the border. Absolutely. But at the same time, it was like... It, Look, I'm not a big fan of either one of the candidates because I'm not a big fan of the, our political system at all right now. I just want to be very clear about <laughs> all of that. But at the same time, like Trump got North Korea to like walk across the line with him and like yeah. sit down and talk like that's fucking impressive. No other president even tried yeah. it, Like this guy pulled it off. Do you want to figure out how to deescalate it? Do the whole like, OK, buddy, what you're doing is cute. Yeah. That's that's. We're proud of you. Yeah. you fucking, you, but you keep it in your own board. Like, like, we're good. And maybe don't starve your people. Yeah. Like that, that'd be great. Right. It, like, and be, and be very careful when you're shooting stuff near us. Yeah. Or to any of our friends. Yeah. yeah. It, like, you know, yeah. you want to, you want to do stuff in your bay, into your, your country or well, whatever. You, you watched the Putin interview with uh, Carlson, Tucker Carlson, right? Yeah. I mean, what'd you think of it? Um, so a lot of this comes down to, I don't know how much you've watched Putin since he went into office. Well, I mean, so, which has been a fucking hot minute. Probably. I don't know yeah. when he went into office, but I, I bet it's real close to when I was born. Yeah. It's, it's so. been a hot minute. Um, Putin, first off, Putin is a despot. There's no other way to slice it. He is 100% a despot. This is a man that went and changed the law so that presidents could hold the office yeah, for life. Yeah, yeah. So it, nobody seeks that kind of power for healthy reasons. But like it's, I've said that yeah. about our country. You really, anybody that wants to be president is not the person you want to be yeah, president. Right. Nobody should want that level of power. It's terrifying. Mm-hmm. He, but he is a master of rhetoric. <laughs> <coughs> Every time they interview him, when he, when he talked to Trump, when he, talk to Carlson when he talked to all this kind of stuff. He interviews extremely well because he comes across as somebody that is balanced, but patriotic when he is being interviewed. Yeah. But you have to measure how good he is at being interviewed against the actions that he's taking. Yeah. But if you listen to what he said in the Tucker interview and then how, <laughs> how, how right now Biden's doubling down on, Ukraine and like, I don't know. It, He's I, looking for reformation you, of the USSR is what Putin's after. No, and I that's, get, this I, is trying I, to I reclaim that, land. But I, but I think the more, I think if we deescalated a little bit, they would, you know, like I think uh, we talked about it right before the show that he uh, talked about using nuclear weapons or something. Right. Justin, what were you saying about that? Uh, I'm pulling that back up right now. Uh, 
Putin said, I believe today, that Russia is ready to use nuclear weapons if its sovereignty and independence is threatened. Which is hilarious because nobody wants Russia. And so he's never... Russia only he's wants... Gonna, Russia only wants other people's sovereignty. Well, so why would... Okay. And so that's what I mean by he's a master of rhetoric. Why would, and it's that whole, like, we need to guard our sovereignty. And it's like, then okay, so you're all about guarding your sovereignty. Then why are you trying to take other countries' sovereignty? Yeah. So it's... It, it, and that's why, what I mean by... Why would Putin sign his own death warrant? Well, he even said it during the Tucker Carlson interview that it would be insane to use nuclear weapons. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but what he's, if you read into what he just stated. But, or, or was it taken out of context? Well, no, if you, if, if you read into the, the, the words that Justin just said, yeah. essentially he said, I'm ready to use anything at my disposal. If I'm attacked. If somebody attacks me. Yeah. That my, does, my, my homeland. Right. Or the, probably the annexation of Crimea I, I, as well. I don't. Which happened years ago and the whole world was like, ah, you shouldn't have done that, but fucking whatever. That's because nobody. But what if a, what if right? what he really said was, "I will not use nuclear weapons unless our sovereignty is in danger," and the media turned it around and said, "Putin said he would use nuclear weapons." Well, that's, if his sovereignty it, is in right. danger, that's that's but, exactly. But his sovereignty is not in danger. But that's that's that's. But but now soundbite news. Yeah, yeah. And that's but but now wanted. that's what's in the news, right? Yeah. Like I don't know. Like, but that's also because Tucker Carlson needs ratings. No, and I, so, I, of course, he's going to bring. I don't the think that was Tucker because in Tucker Carlson's Carlson's interview, um, they asked a lot of specific questions about things like that. Yeah, and I mean, you got to take it with a grain of salt because it's Putin in an yeah. interview. But you know, they, he was like, "Well, you know, the UN's worried about you know Poland," and he's like, I'm, "I have no desire to t touch Poland unless they attack me." You know, yeah. and so like, but you got to look at it in like a. Is he dumb enough to do that? No, but he's also smart enough to say like, well, I said I'd do it. And now Poland is showing support to this country that I'm in combat with. And so that's a threat to my sovereignty. Yeah. And so because he he's not an idiot. He's no. batshit crazy. Yeah. But he's not dumb. I don't know if he's. He's nuts. Is he more nuts than the ones we have? No, no not yeah. at all. But again, I think he's less nuts. Than but the again, ones we have. this is what I'm talking about. Anybody that wants this level of power yeah. is fucking unhinged. Yeah. It, like you're crazy if you want that. And I am talking what about, I, I what? and don't confuse this with I have said like I'm a big fan of Elon Musk. I'm a, a, a the billionaires that are out there, the private the private yeah. billionaires that are out there, do not confuse what I am saying with politicians people that want power right versus people that want the ability to control yeah. their own politicians world. yeah i have it, a, i have a problem with power seekers yeah jeff bezos doesn't want power no nope. jeff bezos wants fucking money yeah and all of it and he wants all of it and you know he's retired he doesn't even run any of his shit anymore he's Why just got he? mad money yeah and and he goes and does stupid shit because he can with his fucking money. You know, Elon Musk has so much fucking money. He's like, I want to go to Mars. What the fuck does that have to do with my gas prices? Fucking nothing. Have do you know what it does? It, it, the fact that we keep voting motherfuckers into office that the general public was like, hey, we should make this geriatric motherfucker CEO yeah. of Bayer Pharmaceuticals. And they go, no. Absolutely not. He's way too old for that. We right. need somebody like mid forties that's been in it that understands yeah. how to do it. Do, do, do. Then why the fuck does this man have the button? Yeah. It, like well, what, it, what are we doing? Well, so, it, like, so I'm going to say this, but I'm I'm not pro Russia, but Putin at least understands his history. Obviously, he talked about it for an hour and a half. You give me Joe Biden talking about history that makes any kind of goddamn sense. Well, I don't know if you knew this, but he's been in every civil rights march that's ever existed, apparently. Uh, on the other side. Oh, yeah, a lot marching of against it. <laughs> but, but what's remarkable is there's no photographs of it. Well, what's what's his, uh, when he's talking about uh, intermingling the colleges and. Yeah. Yeah. Like when he said that him and Barack are firmly against same sex marriage. <laughs> well, yeah. Even yeah. Hillary said that way uh -huh. back in the day. Like, but Hillary eats people, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I fucking said it. I think she's Speaking a cannibal. Speaking of eating people, Haiti. 
Oh my god! Oh, oh, that's a good segue. Pull that. In. I, what, what Haitian? About, eats, what do you mean? What? Eats people? You don't know about Haiti right now? No. There's a there's a a, a cult gang leader named nicknamed Barbecue. Yes. And it's a cannibalistic cult, and they're literally eating people and taking over the country. The prime minister has fled. They released four thousand people yeah, from Haiti's, prisons. Haiti's about to like go under. You know what's ironic? So I had a conversation with my, my my dad about three years ago, and I was talking to him about his deployments. And one of his deployments was in Haiti, and I, I we were talking about Afghanistan. Oh, during the time. Clinton time. Yeah, and I was talking to him, and I was like, "Do you think there's any chance that like Afghanistan or Iraq could ever turn the corner?" And he was like, "With a lot of work, maybe." And I was like, "Are there any that can't?" And he was like, "Yeah, Haiti." <laughs> and, no, it didn't. If you look into the details in that, yeah. So that is a that's kind of when the Clinton Foundation like started it. Yeah, because there was a big fucking what like hurricane or some shit, or yeah. earthquake, earthquake or some an shit. There was an earthquake and it fucked them up. up. But the Clinton Foundation is the ones who funneled hundreds of billions of dollars yeah. into Haiti. In reality, they got a fraction of that. Barely anything got rebuilt and everybody else got rich. Yeah. By the way, if you want to know why Haiti got so fucked in that earthquake, Haiti doesn't believe in a little thing called rebar. And yeah. they build everything out of poured concrete. Now, it's a lot you, of countries. If you have never seen what happens to poured concrete that is not reinforced, it is brittle as fuck. Fuck. It's like a um, well, it's like a sandcastle. Uh, yeah, yep. it looks pretty, yeah. and then you and can, it'll last for a little while. But you can smash it with until anything. any of the elements. If hit. you want to know how easy it is, go pick up a cinder block and drop it. But the cinder the, block's gonna break. The, like, the reason the shit the for the people that listen that don't understand rebar and concrete. The reason you put rebar in concrete when you pour it is if concrete cracks, the rebar still holds it together. If you don't do that, concrete just falls and just goes crumbles. And crumbles. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, when he said it's a lot of countries, that's like all of Iraq. Uh, no, they use some rebar over there. Not enough, but not enough. Some, well, it but depends was, on the building. It, yeah, wait, it depends, on, <laughs> depends on who oh. owned the building. Yeah. We definitely tried to get through some walls that had some fucking rebar. Yep. yep. Yeah. If it was <laughs> and it's, it's like, you're what the f like, really? This fucking was, wall. Yeah. <laughs> if it was part of the regime, it had rebar in it. it was, yeah, ten times what should have been in it. <laughs> Most just. For your information, most walls around a house in Iraq took three fifty cal rounds in the same hole to, to, to penetrate. Yeah, it's pretty good concrete. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was thick. Well, it was thick. Yeah, and yeah. that was mainly for insulation for heat. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about the wall that went around the courtyards. No, the courtyard, oh, the yeah, shit yeah. that had the shattered glass in the that, top yeah. of it. The yeah. homes, the homes took two. Yeah. 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 But the, wall the third on the one's outside, going right through. The wall on the outside was thick and reinforced, and then they they love to do that lovely shattered glass trick yeah. in the it's top. It's cheaper than barbed wire. It was cheaper than barbed wire. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, when they would pour the wall, there was like a mound of concrete they put on the top, and they would smash bottles. Yeah, it's like and mortar. They would, yeah. And they would put broken glass yeah. in the top of the mortar. Nails or whatever. So that if you tried to crawl over the wall, you got fucked up on yeah. the tetanus and cut glass on the top of these fucking walls. You know what's funny is I've seen it all over Central America as well. And all different island countries. And what all cracks over me up place. in Central America is all the houses, not all of them, but the houses in what we would say is a middle income, which yeah. is most of the upper income stuff in those countries. They'll have the barbed wire, but it'll be electrified. Yeah. And when you walk by, you can hear it fucking oh, humming. Yeah. Dude, and we, you're just like, we were in, Whoa. we were, in, <laughs> we were, Michelle and I went to Costa Rica about a month or two ago. Right. On the beach, there was a really nice house, like out of place, super nice. And it had Constantina wire and then three strands of barbed wire. And it had high voltage fucking yeah. signs yeah. on it. You could fucking you hear could it. Hear it. <laughs> you can hear it humming. And it's like, how much are you pumping well, yeah. through like, there? Like in the States, like, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll install an electric fence and it's going to hurt them. But, but you can't hear it. That, but, it, you know, that it'll just... It's a shock. Yeah. Yeah. You grab that fence, you're going to die. Yeah. Cause yeah. you're not letting like, go. they literally just pulled a fucking everything. wire from the it, telephone oh, pole God. and they just hooked it up to that fucking barbed wire. <laughs> Dude, when I, there's was, no resistors or voltage was, regulators or anything. <laughs> fuck that. Was, <laughs> you're, you're not popping a fuse. You I was are in the El fuse Salvador. You're popping. I was in El Salvador and uh, El Salvador is a, it rains because all of those countries, it rains every day. Yeah. It, like it doesn't matter. Well, there's seasons, but yes, but it, 
any of the seasons you're going to travel to those countries, it fucking <laughs> rains every day. And uh, so it would rain and all of that shit would rust like almost instantly. Yeah. But the houses you'd walk by that had the electrified, it would rain and you could watch it sizzle off. And it was just like, oh my God, that is power that you were pumping <laughs> through that shit. So, Justin, what did you find about old Mr. Barbecue? So I guess there's a video that's been going around of uh, someone like peeling flesh off of a leg and then eating it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's been reports that that's a couple years old. But it's definitely still okay. So here's the di- here's something you need to know about. So Haiti was a French colony. Okay. Um, all of the like Caribbean Gulf based French areas, you were going to have a heavy influence of a voodoo culture. Yeah, that's involved. Uh, that's why you still find it in New Orleans and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But especially in Haiti, Haiti still does all of the like animal sacrifice. There's yeah, all yeah. the secondary belief. Take a picture of a Haitian and they'll freak out because you think you stole their soul. Like they're, it's nuts. Um, I've never been to Haiti proper, but I've been to the other side of the island. Yeah. And they let the Haitians come in and that they let them like. You're talking about the Dominican? Yeah. Yeah. So in the DR, they'll let Haitians come in and they use them as day laborers in the tobacco fields. So they're the ones that they like, they string tobacco to go in the huts to dry and all that kind of stuff. But, uh they have a very, very heavy influence of voodoo culture. And if you dig into the darker sides of that, that's the whole, like, he was stronger. I killed him. And now if I eat him, I'll be strong. I get his power and all that kind of stuff. So, and that's where all this is coming from. And there's no Haitian infrastructure. Like it is the wild West in that country. We were there in the nineties. The the, the military went in there to try and stabilize that. The U S government has a plan. I hope it's glass the fucking okay. island. Yeah, I'm sure. And, and their plan is they need to restore a democratic government with elected officials, but they're not putting U.S. boots on the ground there to to make it work. They found somebody else, and they they're just going to fund. Them. Oh my! So they're going to fund them with three hundred million dollars. I'll kill anybody you want. To. Who do you think it is? Million. I'll give you two guesses. Who do you think it is? You'll, I don't think you'll guess it. Well, it can't be Blackwater because no, no, it's, it's, it's a different entity. country. Yeah, we're gonna give three hundred million dollars to stabilize it to, to for another country to come in and, and stabilize it, and then I'll tell you why the country isn't gonna do it. But you gotta guess the country first. Haiti? Nope. No, I mean, I'll we're see, going to stabilize yes. Haiti. I'll yes, I'll, China's into a lot nope. of that weird shit um, because the U.S. government's funding them. The U.S. government's not gonna fund China. And you, you never know. Yes, well, I hope they fucking I know. know. But New Guinea, Kenya, what? Fucking yep. That, right now, you know what the Kenyan government said? No, we won't go in and do that unless there's an established government already. We went in. Huh. We went so, into the nineties. We went there in the nineties. We went there in the nineties, and we gave them rice. Can, can, I feel like Kenya's, uh, which by the way, completely destroyed their internal economy because one of the number one things they grow in fucking Haiti is rice. <laughs> and so we showed up with government aid and brought rice. We bought rice and clothing. And the only thing that they produce there yeah. is fucking textiles and rice. Yeah. And that's what we brought in and it destroyed the local economy. Yeah. Kenya. Yeah. Why are we trying to save Haiti? It, like, Yeah. Who gives a it, fuck? Let have you, Haiti have go you, down. Have you ever flown into the DR? No, you I did. Really, yeah. Did you do what I told you to do when you flew in? Did you look out the window? Yeah. Did you see the water line? Yeah. Okay. If you've never flown into that island, when you fly in, it's so it's one island. Half is Haiti, half is the Dominican Republic. And this is not a big island. No. no. But it's two countries on it. And when you fly in, one side is green, with blue oceans, and beaches, and whatever. And the other side is a stripped mountainside and bullshit. And there's a brown ring in the water that literally there's a line that you can see. Cause there's a mountain in the middle <laughs> that splits the <laughs> Island. And there is a line like you Photoshopped it. It is the <laughs> wildest shit. Did you see it when you flew in? Yes. And it's, it's, it's not blended either. No. It's, it's like a hard fucking yeah. line over the Island. It, it, it looks is, like a kid took a crayon and just went, Whoop. it is the wild. So when he, when he went there yeah. uh, for his honeymoon, I was like, okay, have a good time, and I don't want to. I don't want to try and shit on it. But when you fly in, look out the window. Yeah. When you're when you're getting close to the island, and you will see it, there's a line in the ocean, and it's just like I don't even know how you did this. I I 
Like I've never been to Haiti, but I feel like it, it, it would remind me a lot of Jamaica. Like the really poor parts of Jamaica. Okay. Except and, make it poorer. And, but remember we had that customer when Silencer HQ that was a Haitian dude that was trying to figure out how to sell ship shit to Oh, Haiti. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, real shady dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. But like, why, why is the U.S. getting involved in Haiti? Why do we care? Because it's close. Yeah. Yeah. What? what? It's well, it's near us. What are they? Why? Yeah, but what are they? It's not like they have. How many aircraft does the Haitian Air Force have? I don't think they have one. I don't know. That's probably where I'm <laughs> fucking going with this. Is there? I don't like. like what's the threat that Haiti poses? To the if, United States? if gangs took over the country, I don't think they have a military. I think it'd be more stabilized. Right. <laughs> At least gangs have a structure. Yeah. Like, get, and if we close our border, then none of the Haitians get in. But Especially the four thousand prisoners that the gangs released. Yeah. Because you're on an island. You're on an. How island. the fuck are you gonna get away? Like, oh, I just got freed from jail. But not the right way. Yeah. So I can't really hang out because eventually mm-hmm. shit's going to get figured out and then I'm going to go back to jail. But it's all just gotten worse. So where do I go? Do I go to the Dominican Republic? No. Do I go to Cuba? Can. Dude, the Dominican Border Patrol, I shit you not, they shoot them on the mountains. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Is that the entire oh, Haitian grasshopper. aircraft? Yep. They have two grasshoppers, a bobcat, a commando, and three valiants. Well, a bobcat's a Cessna. The Valiant has been in service since the 1940s. Those are the trainers. All three of them. So <laughs> they have three trainers and four aircraft. <laughs> 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 and the trainer, like they have one heavy transport, one light train. They have one C-46. Oh, and first off, one that was liaison. the aircraft retired before the disbandment of the Haitian Air Corps. Oh, there you go. So there is no more. And the O fifty seven. That's like a, at the time of that's the disbandment. Small. That's this was at the time of the disbandment of the Haitian Air Corps. This was the inventory, and then what we just listed. Justin, right. scroll right a little bit. Look at that picture. A Haitian Air Corps. <laughs> that's a picture of two planes. <laughs> yep. They put the guy in there. They hand him an AK, and they're like, "Go fight, son." Yeah. They, <laughs> they have seven planes and two pilots. Now the Dominicans literally shoot the Haitians as they cross the border. Because they try to come over the mountain, and there's Dominican patrols on the mountain. And if you try to come over them, they just shoot you. So tell me what threat Haitian Haiti poses to the United States if they don't have aircraft. I guarantee they don't have a navy. It's a money filter. It's fucking stupid. It's Why do we care? Filter. We don't. With three hundred million dollars, we care. We must care a little bit. That's not even the wildest thing that I've seen to spend a couple hundred million. Fuck no, it's just dumb. Well, that's it's it's gotten to the point where these numbers are so incomprehensible that it doesn't matter. Well, 300 million is like three. If it'd be like three pennies sitting here. Well, see, I I'm I'm a firm believer that everything has to go back to a a cash basis. Right. You're going to send eighty six billion dollars overseas. Cool. Set it up in cash. Yeah, then let was, Congress walk through and actually make the decision if they want to send all of that to somebody else. They did, and it went on heavy transports to Iran. I was, I was about to say no, that wait. that was different, and that wasn't Congress didn't pass that. Right, that was a Obama fucking negotiation skills. <laughs> I mean, I'm still gonna smoke it. Yeah, that was Obama's negotiation skills. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. I don't we know. all saw they went a cat. I just don't understand crappy. what we were buying for that one. Well, we were, we were buying a future conflict so everyone could continue <laughs> to make money. Yeah. There's that's a, all we were doing. There's entire contracting companies that exist in San Antonio that was cash from Iraq that just got lost, that came back to the States and stood people's. You've met them. Yeah. They tried to find lost cash in Iraq. I, I, I looked. Almost happened. I saw it. I yeah. just couldn't figure out how to commandeer it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking, it's still a weird world, kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but during that State of the Union, what were you guys thinking about? Whether um, or not I was getting laid that night. Mm, I was praying for that meteorite <laughs> real fucking hard. 
<laughs> real hard. I was honest. I I I went into that with a mindset of I don't know who I'm going to vote for. I is want- this going to convince me that this is the man for the job? Like, what is he going to say in his speech? That's going to like. Say I was on the fence. I don't really know who I'm going to vote for. I don't know if I want to vote for Trump or vote for Biden. I'm not really sure. Let's hear him speak. Let me let yeah. me see what he has to say. That's the mindset that I went into it with. And then after it, I was like, I'm not voting for that fucking guy. <laughs> yeah, but has the other guy's speeches really given you that warm and fuzzy yet? Not, actually, not yet. I don't know. They but he hasn't really he hasn't really done any that were. They do a little bit that were like. Um, He's got his 15 things he's going to do when he takes office. Again. Well, yeah. And, and he the, has been talking about trying to bring the country together. And the, the majority of the stuff that he's probably talking not about the right now is, all, is also defensive just because of the things that are going on. Now, if if he goes back to pre-politic Trump and truly becomes that moderate again, yeah. he could do fucking yeah. work. Well, I like the fact that he's like, I'm not out for revenge. My success will be revenge enough. I just want to see the debate. Yeah, there won't be. I fucking hope there is. I, oh, I hope so. Be. I, there, I don't fucked think. up. I thought they announced that they weren't doing a debate. I don't know, but I I, I would put money on they don't. I want to know who's going to get Ryan Reynolds to moderate it. <laughs> Fuck, I'll moderate it. What the fuck care? <laughs> Let us moderate it. Yeah. Get the four of us out there. <laughs> it, with a mute button. It just, no. Yeah, no, because... <laughs> He needs to answer. You shut the fuck up. Let him speak. Okay, yeah. your time's done. Okay, now you speak. Yep. You know? And so be like, oh, well, sir, sir. Like, We're going to start at 7 a.m. And our hard cutoff yeah. time is 7 p.m. Well, that's it. I will sir you until you go against the rules that are set up for this debate. The second you go against them, shut the fuck up. No, then you It's not even sir. Yeah. It's motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> well, I think son of a bitch. What the fuck did I tell you last time? I mean, hey, motherfucker, like, it's his turn. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> you have to get the magic talking stick, and whoever has the magic talking stick gets to talk. That's the rule. It's a pool noodle. And if you want to talk and the other guy's talking, you have to beat him with the pool noodle until he drops the mic. <laughs> There's a guy in the rafters. Whoever's whoever has the laser on him has to shut the fuck up. Yeah. No, it's there, uh, this is my official commission <laughs> to let the freedom friends moderate the presidential yeah, debate. Yeah, right. It'll be gold. When uh, <laughs> we can't even moderate our own debates. When we were, that's <laughs> <laughs> why so we have Justin. Yeah, <laughs> and you suck, sir. <laughs> and he's got four mute buttons. He's yeah. muted us. That's I have. true. He has. He's it's done everything. That we've, the only thing he hasn't done is brought in pool noodles to let us beat each other with. <laughs> That's it. Other than that, he's been on track. He lets it go to see where it needs to go. But yeah. I think like when we went to Jazz's wedding and we were at Call of Booty and they had those guys in the monkey mask up top with the little blasters. <laughs> that's what needs to happen. If you start to interrupt. It lit up by Orbeez. I don't know what this is. <laughs> okay. So at my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, the, the night after my wedding, we went to this thing that's in the campgrounds called Call of Booty. Yeah. And it's a pirate themed. It's, it's naked. Yeah, naked it's jacket. naked. Jacket. Yeah. Okay. And it, but it's all pirate themed. Yeah. So they have like a the front end of a boat and I know all the guys that run it. So we all got to go up on the boat. Yeah. And yeah. so we're watching the crowd from like the stage area. Well, they have these two masts that they've built that has the lights to okay. light up the area. Well, there's these two dudes that dress up in monkey masks so it, and everything. It was also Halloween weekend. Okay. Yeah, so normally they're not dressed up as, mon- uh, as monkeys. Okay. They're normally just as pirates. But they scale these mass and they sit up on these things and they've got those orby blasters love it and, and they wait for somebody to try to record something try to pull a phone and they fucking out. light them up love it and then everybody goes and, and makes right. them delete so all the shit there's all these like seven foot fuckers in black trench coats and so the monkeys sit up there and they watch and if somebody pulls their phone out and i i warned everybody yeah i was like look i get it you're gonna get a text message or a phone call yeah. or whatever but if you're going to do that, make walk. it very obvious you are not near the show. Walk the fuck away. Yeah, We're right. up here. We have that lower area. Go down there where you can't see the show. Do not pull your phone out yeah. during the fucking yeah. show. Don't pull your phone out and check your messages like this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't pull your phone or Orbeez are coming. Yeah. No, no they, they'll make you delete your shit and kick you out. Yeah. yeah. So not to mention, like, 
we're at a party. Everybody's yeah. but like, there's all the there's fucking I, naked chicks playing Jenga. Why are I, you on your phone? I get I, it. Like I'm headed to something like that tomorrow. Yeah, right. Like, why are you on your phone? <laughs> so, but these dudes will light these dudes up with Orbeez, and then these two giant motherfuckers will show up. Yeah. They yeah. take your phone, they delete all your shit, and then they kick you out. So, yeah, absolutely. It's just that whole like. Well, I think it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what do y'all think? time wise because i like the idea of like it should go for as long as how whenever the questions have been answered yes so, like i said start at but 7 a.m hard cut off time at 7 p.m yeah but i also don't give you scripted questions you don't know what i'm asking you leading yes. up to the debate fucking no you because every debate it? they get a list of questions they already have their answers yeah. like and i understand why they do that, that. we get to do it all of well, us have, have an ipad to. and we're going to turn it on on reddit and do an ama <laughs> and, and just the, and the, the all the questions are coming from the public. It's not a scripted thing. It's not a it's not a poly, it's not a fucking pundit that they put together. It's nope. This How is, hard do you grab them by the pussy when you grab them by the pussy? Yeah, are we talking like eight pound bowling yeah. ball yeah. or like are you fourteen? Pound really pound squeezing? Or is it, let me demonstrate. Or is it, or is it a <laughs> gentle squeeze? Yeah. Show me on this man. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just have Mikey standing up there. <laughs> <laughs> Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> like, yes, Mr. President or former President Trump, he does not have a pussy. You do not have to grab it. Mr. Biden, <laughs> it's 2024 and you're all about this. He's got a pussy. He's Go grab it. He says he has a pussy and you need to grab it. <laughs> her, <laughs> Mikey's pronouns are now her, she. <laughs> And all that hurt, yeah. like fuck. Yeah, so I still I still nominate the Freedom Friends as the moderators yeah. of the president, and only one night, not fucking six nights of debates, one oh. fucking debate, but twelve hours. I don't give a fuck. Uh, yeah, let's Just fucking let it run. Yeah, we'll we'll stop when the questions end. Yeah, yeah, and if you don't answer a question, God help you, because it's gonna be like, okay, shut the fuck up. You're not answering the question. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I don't I, like, well, no, then I'm going to dig in and I want to know why you're not answering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You better. I need a reason why, why a legitimate reason. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't want to. Oh, okay. Oh, this is why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about that. <laughs> well, you don't have an answer. All right. On to the other guy. It like, wait, no, fuck. You had your chance. Yeah. You didn't fucking answer. Now it's his shot. It like, it'd be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. I think we could keep it professional. I think we could if if, we if it really it. came to that. I think we could. Yeah, I, I think, think having four just average ass Americans. I think it'd be, run and it like, it of, would be like a 70-30. Like I don't like the fact that just because you're not that in that party that you treat the president with disrespect. Right? Sometimes you gotta respect the position. You don't have to respect the person. Yes, sometimes they deserve no respect. However, it's still the fucking president of the United States. Yeah. Right. I I would say duly elected, but that's a stretch sometimes. He's, it, he's still the president of the United States <laughs> right now. <laughs> but, I, you know, I like uh, Bill Burr's take on it. He wants someone in their 40s, so they have to actually live with their choices. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The downfall, though, is like you don't really have. At that position, at that um, not position, um, status in life, you don't deal with your the consequences of your actions. No, you're above that's it. True, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. And that's what it goes back to. Like when Congress, when they were during the city union, they were talking about, or Biden was trying to talk about all the things that he wants to do. Yeah, you know, for middle lower class income Americans and. Congress was like, yeah, it's like, shut the fuck up. You, you have no idea what he saw. You've never experienced any of this in your entire fucking life. I just want that hot mic moment where it's like, oh, we need to do that for the pores. And then the hot mic is like, fuck the pores. <laughs> you know, it's out there. I just want it fucking out there. <laughs> the biggest problem I have with it. The biggest problem I have with the debate, to be honest with you, is that they always want to bring in some news broadcaster. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no. There's no apolitical news broadcaster. Every single one of them, they come from one of the platforms. And they try to do that gotcha question. Yeah, to yeah. make one of them, one or the other. Like That's what I'm saying is that like somebody like a, a group like us, yeah. any of us, 
that's just a look. I think you're both pieces of shit. So why don't you convince well, me otherwise? Like as like, as the State of the Unions, I was I'm watching this. Like what I heard is a complete lie. I have a follow on question. Well, I think you're saying that because of this, but in reality, it's this. Yeah. You know, explain that. You know, like and that I, kind of shit, I think. And I think that kind of thing, if you could follow that line of questioning, yeah. they're going to break character. But you look at like the new. Because what you're getting is a character. You're not getting yeah. them. Yeah. And I, I think the the proper sequence of questioning like that, where it's like, that's bullshit. But and you, you call them on it. But you have these news broadcasters who are are right there. They're in the middle of this. But they're not even listening to the answer. They're looking at their next question. Because and they, they, there's missed opportunities for a, a fucking do you want to know perfect why? follow on question. Do you want to know why? They want that paycheck. They don't give a fuck about the answer. No, I, I'll do it for free. Care. I get it. That's it. The I, Freedom I, Friends will yeah. do it for free. We will come yeah. and moderate yep. for free. I will do it for free. Fuck it. We'll host it here. It, it, but I love it. I suppose we'll travel if we have to. <laughs> I'll, I'd, I'm just trying to cut expenses. Uh, you, yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Netflix, I don't want to see the Jake Paul fucking... Tyson. Tyson fight. Fucking it, let an average ass American moderate the presidential debate. I agree. I don't care. Pick. I almost want to put an average American up against Biden in a debate. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yes. Yes. Pull a fucking random social and be like, you know, hey, the, the only downfall to that is you got somebody with 40 plus years of experience in politics and just talking to talk. Yeah, but as like long as he, it, he is, has enough talking points in the Rolodex, as long as it could be a long form enough conversation. Yeah, but it's it's not about the 40 plus years in politics. It's literally a do they whoever's running it just needs to know enough about the state of the actual country, right? the actual right. state of the union that can answer real questions that reflect what 90 percent of the population is actually feeling, yeah. not the loud five percent on each side. Yeah. Fuck, and the loud five percent on each side all suck. Yeah, they, they all you're, suck. You're fuck. fucking horrible people. Yeah. So uh, horrible people. I don't care who we vote for. If you're that loud five percent on each side, you you're an awful person. Right. So if you're a one, the the ninety percent of us that fall kind of in the middle, they, like everybody has kind of a left or right lean to them, right? Yeah, yeah. But most of us fall somewhere in the middle. Yeah. They, I always fall back on your fucking quote that you want to be able to carry your gun and smoke pot at your gay best friend's wedding. Yeah. It, like that's, it's like it. Yeah. That sounds like freedom to me. Yeah. It, like, like, that's I, what, like I just don't want f like freedoms taken away. Yeah. That was the one thing that really pissed me off in the fucking Biden in literally one sentence is like, I don't want to take freedoms away from people. We should, we need to do something about gun fucking shit. Like you're literally saying you don't want to take freedoms away but you need to ban assault rifles like all in the same sentence like it was literally almost no gap in that sentence yeah but like, all of that stuff I they're know. so uneducated there was that senator that just tried to do the speech on the assault ban and it would essentially get rid of ar platforms yeah. and he's like but it doesn't impact like the m1 garand the sks like yeah. all of these and these guys well, are like, like, like well these these ancient rifles well, and they were like well these rifles have killed more people right. than any other military yeah. rifle <laughs> well, ever well but, like, biden said it he's like i did it once i'll do it again well, the first time he did it he got rid of flash hiders bayonet lugs high ca regular capacity magazines right and after that 10 years or whatever that it was i think it was 10 years it was proven that it did no good no that it solved nothing to get rid of bayonet lugs flash hiders high capacity magazines so the, the cool thing about it but is he wants to do it again they've, they've already because, found a lot of that stuff unconstitutional yeah so like you can say you want to do that all you yeah. want but this goes right back to are we really worried about the guy that's willing to commit mass murder are we really worried about his that's the crime he wants to commit. So instead we're going to enforce a law to where the possession of it's illegal. Right. Is this guy really worried about the possession charge? No, he's already a criminal. Yeah. He doesn't care. <laughs> like That's, I killed 17 people, but Oh, they stacked on the illegal weapons charge. Yeah. Oh, like, you know, that's, is that really that's the going to make me not, about? Want, I'm yeah. not going to do it now because of that. You know, I'm like, like, you know what? I'm going to skip. I'm on the other side or I'm like fucking arm the teachers. I'm going to skip being it, a like, mass murderer. Because I'm afraid of that, oh, weapons, that charge. weapons charge. And it's yeah. like, well, it would make. Well, it I'm going to be a mass murderer, but I'm not going to use a flash hider, a bayonet lug, 
or a 30 round magazine. I'm going to use a 10 round magazine and a gun without a flash hider or bayonet lug. You know, like it, it makes no fucking sense. I hate to tell you this flash hiders don't help in a classroom, but silencers help in the library. <laughs> Oh, that's Jeez. epic, sir. <laughs> On that note, if you're a school shooter, you said the you said the inside the, thing outside again. I Re fucking, <laughs> respect I the I library rules. <laughs> respect the <laughs> library rules. You said the inside outside again. <laughs> I gotta stop God. doing this. <laughs> oh, God. that was perfect. We talked about this. I know we did. <laughs> I had a real problem with it at your wedding. <laughs> we talked about it. I thought this. I got past it, but I guess I did. Oh, fuck. <laughs> On that note, let's end this shit. <laughs> oh, oh, silencer for, okay, our, silencers like, are for libraries. It's perfect. I love it. Oh, I love it. Okay. Your uh, librarian would be proud. <laughs> but I mean, you got to think. You, you gotta stop. <laughs> just, just stop. Okay, I'll stop. Warfightertobacco.com. <laughs> Go check out the Warfighter uh, podcast. comes out every Friday if you want to hear more from these two idiots. <laughs> Holy shit. What am I missing? He's got me completely That's derailed. Yeah. Anybody Whatever. want to make a 9-11 joke real quick? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have one after that. No. Fucking. I, you know what? Stop yelling Kobe. Yell, yell Cobain. He didn't miss his shot. Uh, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> oh, well, it's not U.S. Yeah. Uh, if you want to hear me get nerdy, you can go check out the Warhammered podcast. Uh, holy hell, I'll raise my glass. Cheers. Say thank you for being my degenerate fucking freedom. <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. I appreciate that one. Uh, anyways, yeah. until on. next time, drink on. God damn it. Freedom, freedom the, the fuck, fuck on. on. <laughs>